How many pieces of clothing does Abigail have? I look up from my survey, listen to Esther's Swahili translation, hear the answer. Four. I look back at the paper I've been provided, at the perfect healthy white family printed at the top clothed in white t-shirts that were probably only worn once for the photograph. I write down two skirts, two shirts, and in a flash of the white paper, see myself at Abigail's age, seven, dresser full of underappreciated clothing, some of which I probably only wore once, if ever. She has fewer clothes to her name than years on earth than back home. I always thought the kids on child sponsorship commercials must be the worst off the producers could find. But the Tanzanian kids squatting before me, bare feet and torn t-shirts hanging off skinny shoulders have the eyes I've seen on TV. And these kids, they're everywhere. In classrooms, passing through banana trees and rows of corn with buckets of water balanced on their heads between the cell phone kiosks and butcher shops where cuts of cattle hang from hooks more meat on their bones than these children on theirs. And I've seen few cows here that didn't appear starving, like the dogs who scavenge meals from piles of garbage, garbage awaiting incineration like men wearing low-cut shirts that reveal ribs sticking out of chest sometimes farther than the ribs of the street dog I named Jet. I interviewed Samueli and he wants to be a pilot. Ziada wants to be a teacher. She already is teaching a member of a population far more educated than her people but there's more to literacy rates and mathematical proficiency than availability and quality. These kids have determination and passion. I've never heard a white kid beg for more math problems after murmuring numbers under his breath for two hours in Swahili. It sounds to me like prayers, like a message to their God. Look, you may have given us a rough start, but we're making something of ourselves. They're all going somewhere, just like they all came from somewhere. Monica is only two and a half, but won't ever neglect the opportunity to write the alphabet the way her mother neglected the opportunity to raise a beautiful girl. And Aaliyah practices pseudo karate on me. Even though when I look at his legs, I feel like I'm staring into a black and white photo of a Holocaust victim, but Aaliyah has more color in his skin than I do in my blue eyes. Blue skies were copious. While the sunny state of Colorado was shrouded in snow clouds and gray flakes falling exhaust, clinging to tires on iced over streets like dirt of a grassless field, the soccer feet naked save for sandals. And I ran around with thorns in my feet, hoping I could pick up some belief in their Jesus. Even went to a Catholic service. But the most holy moment for me was the sound of a baby bursting out crying, breathing deep into tiny lungs, breaking the silence of our knees, pressed into prayer. Would yeah, maybe believing still isn't right for me. But learning and observing have never felt closer to religion. My senses became an overexposed photograph. I became hyper aware of everything, captured the finest details in every snapshot. So I'm taking this all with me. Every instant that I realized I have way too much, and they are far from having enough. Every widow whose smile said happy, but eyes said I've seen hell. Danny's six-year-old gums, black and bleeding. The 11-year-old boy at my taxi window begging for money. An amputated windshield wiper in one hand, a bucket of soapy water in the other. The screams of one brother beaten by another. I'm putting this all into my self-portrait photograph. Look here, and you might catch a glimpse of a different kind of heartbroken. Thank you.